चैप्टर टेन बायोटेक्नोलॉजी एंड इट्स एप्लीकेशन बायोटेक्नोलॉजी एज यू वुड हैव लर्न फ्रॉम द प्रीवियस चैप्टर essentially deals with industrial scale production of biopharmaceuticals and biologicals using genetically modified microbes fungi plants and animals the applications of biotechnology include therapeutics diagnostics genetically modified crops for agriculture processed food bioremediation waste treatment and energy production three critical research areas of biotechnology are number 1 providing the best catalyst in the form of improved organism usually a microbe or pure enzyme number 2 creating optimal conditions through engineering for a catalyst to act and number 3 downstream processing technologies to purify the protein or organic compound let us now learn how human beings have used biotechnology to improve the quality of human life especially in the field of food production and health 10.1 biotechnological applications in agriculture let us take a look at the three options that can be thought for increasing food production number 1 agrochemical based agriculture number 2 organic agriculture and number 3 genetically engineered crop based agriculture the green revolution succeeded in tripling the food supply but yet it was not enough to feed the growing population increased yields have partly been due to the use of improved crop varieties but mainly due to the use of better management practices and use of agrochemicals fertilizers and pesticides However for farmers in the developing world agrochemicals are often too expensive and further increases in yield with existing varieties are not possible using conventional breeding as traditional breeding techniques failed to keep pace with demand and to provide sufficiently fast and efficient systems for crop improvement another technology called tissue culture got developed what does tissue culture mean it was learned by scientists during 1950s that whole plant could be regenerated from explants that is any part of a plant taken out and grown in a test tube under sterile conditions in special nutrient media this capacity to generate a whole plant from any cell or explant is called totipotency you will learn how to accomplish this in higher classes it is important to stress here that the nutrient medium must provide a carbon source such as sucrose and also inorganic salts vitamins amino acids and growth regulators like auxins cytokinins etc by application of these methods it is possible to achieve propagation of a large number of plants in very short durations This method of producing thousands of plants through tissue culture is called micropropagation. Each of these plants will be genetically identical to the original plant from which they were grown. That is, they are soma clones. Many important food plants like tomato, banana, apple, etc., have been produced on commercial scale using this method. try to visit a tissue culture laboratory with your teacher to better understand and appreciate the process another important application of the method is the recovery of healthy plants from diseased plants even if the plant is infected with a virus the meristem apical and axillary is free of virus hence one can remove the meristem and grow it in vitro to obtain virus free plants scientists have succeeded in culturing meristems of banana sugarcane potato etc scientists have even isolated single cells from plants and after digesting their cell walls have been able to isolate naked protoplast surrounding by plasma membrane isolated protoplast from two different varieties of plants each having a desirable character can be fused to get hybrid protoplasts which can be further grown to form a new plant 
these hybrids are called somatic hybrids while the process is called somatic hybridization imagine a situation when a protoplast of tomato is fused with that of potato and then they are grown to form new hybrid plants combining tomato and potato characteristics well this has been achieved resulting in formation of pomato unfortunately this plant did not have all the desired combination of characteristics for its commercial utilization is there any alternative path that our understanding of genetics can show so that farmers may obtain maximum yield from their fields is there a way to minimize the use of fertilizers and chemicals so that their harmful effects on the environment are reduced use of genetically modified crops is a possible solution plants bacteria fungi and animals whose genes have been altered by manipulation are called genetically modified organisms gmo gm plants have been useful in many ways genetic modification has number 1 made crops more tolerant to abiotic stresses cold drought salt heat number 2 reduced reliance on chemical pesticides pest resistance crops number 3 helped to reduce post harvest losses number 4 increased efficiency of mineral usage by plants this prevents early exhaustion of fertility of soil and number 5 enhanced nutritional value of food example golden rice that is vitamin a enriched rice in addition to these uses gm has been used to create tailor made plants to supply alternative resources to industries in the form of starches oils and pharmaceutical some of the applications of biotechnology in agriculture that you will study in detail are the production of pest resistance plants which could decrease the amount of pesticide used bt toxin is produced by a bacterium called bacillus thuringiensis bt for short bt toxin gene has resistance to insects without the need for insecticides in effect created a bio pesticide examples are bt cotton bt corn rice tomato potato and soybean etc bt cotton some strains of bacillus thuringiensis produce proteins that kill certain insects such as lepidopterans tobacco badworm armyworm polyopterans beetles and dipterans flies mosquitoes bacillus thuringiensis forms protein crystals during a particular phase of their growth these crystals contain a toxic insecticidal protein why does this toxin not kill the bacillus actually the bt toxin protein exist as inactive protoxin but once an insect ingest the inactive toxin it is converted into an active form of toxin due to the alkaline ph of the gut which solubilize the crystals the activated toxin binds to the surface of mid gut epithelial cells and create pores that cause cell swelling and lysis and eventually cause death of the insect specific bt toxin genes were isolated from bacillus thuringiensis and incorporated into the several crop plants such as cotton figure 10.1 the choice of genes depends upon the crop and the target pest as most bt toxins are insect group specific the toxin is coded by a gene cry 1 ac named cry there are a number of them for example the proteins encoded by the genes cry 1 ac and cry 2 ab control the cotton bollworms that of cry 1 ab controls corn borer this is the figure 10.1 this is the destroyed cotton ball and this is a fully mature cotton ball pest resistant plants Several nematodes parasite a wide variety of plants and animals including human beings. A nematode Melongina incognita infects the root of tobacco plants and causes a great reduction in yield. A novel strategy was adopted 
to prevent this infestation which was based on the process of RNA interference RNAi. RNAi takes place in all eukaryotic organisms as a method of cellular defense. This method involves silencing of a specific mRNA due to a complementary dsRNA molecule that binds to and prevents translation of the mRNA silencing. The source of this complementary RNA could be from an infection by viruses having RNA genomes or mobile genetic elements transposons that replicate via an RNA intermediate. Using agrobacterium vectors, nematode-specific genes were introduced into the host plant, figure 10.2. The introduction of DNA was such that it produced both sense and antisense RNA in the host cells. These two RNAs being complementary to each other formed a double-stranded dsRNA that initiated RNA interference and thus silenced the specific mRNA of the nematode. The consequence was that the parasite could not survive in a transgenic host expressing specific interfering RNA. The transgenic plant therefore got itself protected from the parasite. Figure 10.2 this is figure 10.2. Host plant generated double stranded RNA triggers protection against nematode infestation. 10.2 Biotechnological applications in medicine. The recombinant DNA technological processes have made immense impact in the area of healthcare by enabling mass production of safe and more effective therapeutic drugs. Further, the recombinant therapeutics do not induce unwanted immunological responses as is common in case of similar products isolated from non-human sources. At present, about 30 recombinant therapeutics have been approved for human use the world over. In India, 12 of these are presently being marketed. 10.2.1 Genetically engineered insulin. Management of adult onset diabetes is possible by taking insulin at regular time intervals. What would a diabetic patient do if enough human insulin was not available? If you discuss this, you would soon realize that one would have to isolate and use insulin from other animals. Would the insulin isolated from other animals be just as effective as that secreted by the human body itself and would it not elicit an immune response in the human body? Now imagine if bacterium were available that could make human insulin, suddenly the whole process becomes so simple. You can easily grow a large quantity of the bacteria and make as much insulin as you need. Think about whether insulin can be orally administered to diabetic people or not. Why? Insulin used for diabetes was earlier extracted from pancreas of slaughtered cattle and pigs. Insulin from an animal source, though caused some patients to develop allergy or other types of reactions to the foreign protein. Insulin consists of two short polypeptide chains, chain A and chain B, that are linked together by disulfide bridges, figure 10.3. In mammals, including humans, insulin is synthesized as a prohormone, like a proenzyme. The prohormone also needs to be processed before it becomes a fully mature and functional hormone which contains an extra stretch called the C-peptide. This C-peptide is not present in the mature insulin and is removed during maturation into insulin. The main challenge for production of insulin using rDNA techniques was getting insulin assembled into a mature form. In 1983, Eli Lilly, an American company, prepared two DNA sequences corresponding to A and B chains of human insulin and introduced them in plasmids of E. coli to produce insulin chains. Chains A and B were produced separately, extracted, 
and combine by creating disulfide bonds to form human insulin. This is the figure 10.3 maturation of proinsulin into insulin. This is the proinsulin. This is A peptide, B peptide, and the C peptide is cut out. 10.2.2 Gene therapy. If a person is born with a hereditary disease, can a corrective therapy be taken for such a disease? Gene therapy is an attempt to do this. Gene therapy is a collection of methods that allows correction of a gene defect that has been diagnosed in a child or embryo. Here genes are inserted into a person's cell and tissues to treat a disease. Correction of a genetic defect involves delivery of a normal gene into the individual or embryo to take over the function of and compensate for the non-functional gene. The first clinical gene therapy was given in 1990 to a 4-year-old girl with adenosine deaminase ADA deficiency. This enzyme is crucial for the immune system to function. The disorder is caused due to the deletion of the gene for adenosine deaminase. In some children, ADA deficiency can be cured by bone marrow transplantation. In others, it can be treated by enzyme replacement therapy in which functional ADA is given to the patient by injection. But the problem with both these approaches that they are not completely curative. As a first step towards gene therapy, lymphocytes from the blood of the patient are grown in a culture outside the body. A functional ADS-C DNA using a retroviral vector is then introduced into these lymphocytes which are subsequently returned to the patient. However, as these cells are not immortal, the patient requires periodic infusion of such genetically engineered lymphocytes. However, if the gene isolated from marrow cells producing ADA is introduced into cells at early embryonic stage, it could be a permanent cure. 1.2.3 Molecular Diagnosis You know that for effective treatment of a disease, Early diagnosis and understanding its pathology is very important. Using conventional methods of diagnosis, serum and urine analysis, etc., early detection is not possible. Recombinant DNA technology, polymerase chain reaction or PCR, and enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay or ELISA are some of the techniques that serve the purpose of early diagnosis. Presence of a pathogen, bacteria, virus, etc. is normally suspected only when the pathogen has produced a disease symptom. By this time, the concentration of pathogen is already very high in the body. However, very low concentration of a bacteria or virus a time when the symptoms of the disease are not yet visible can be detected by amplification of their nucleic acid by PCR. Can you explain how PCR can detect very low amount of DNA? PCR is now routinely used to detect HIV in suspected AIDS patients. It is being used to detect mutations in genes in suspected cancer patients too. It is a powerful technique to identify many other genetic disorders. A single-stranded DNA or RNA tagged with a radioactive molecule called probe is allowed to hybridize to its complementary DNA in a clone of cells followed by detection using autoradiography. The clone having the mutated gene will hence not appear on the photographic film because the probe will not have complementarity with the mutated gene. ELISA is based on the principle of antigen-antibody interaction. Infection by pathogen can be detected by the presence of antigens, proteins, glycoproteins, etc. or by detecting the antibodies synthesized against the pathogen. 10.3. Transgenic animals. 
animals that have had their DNA manipulated to possess and express an extra foreign gene are also known as transgenic animals. Transgenic rats, rabbits, pigs, sheep, cows and fish have been produced although over 95% of all existing transgenic animals are mice. Why are these animals being produced? How can man benefit from such modifications? Let us try and explore some of the common reasons. Number 1. Normal Physiology and Development Transgenic animals can be specifically designed to allow the study of how genes are regulated and how they affect the normal functions of the body and its development. Example, study of complex factors involved in growth such as insulin-like growth factor. By introducing genes from other species that alter the formation of this factor and studying the biological effects that result, information is obtained about the biological role of the factor in the body. Number 2. Study of Disease Many transgenic animals are designed to increase our understanding of how genes contribute to the development of disease. These are specially made to serve as models for human diseases so that investigation of new treatments for diseases is made possible. Today, transgenic models exist for many human diseases such as cancer, cystic fibrosis, rheumatoid arthritis and Alzheimer's. Number 3. Biological Products Medicines required to treat certain human diseases can contain biological products, but such products are often expensive to make. Transgenic animals that produce useful biological products can be created by the introduction of the portion of DNA or genes which codes for a particular product such as human protein alpha-1 antitrypsin used to treat emphysema. Similar attempts are being made for treatment of phenylketonuria or PKU and cystic fibrosis. In 1997, the first transgenic cow, Rosie, produced human protein-enriched milk, 2.4 grams per liter. The milk contained the human alpha-lactylbumin and was nutritionally a more balanced product for human babies than natural cow milk. Number 4. Vaccine Safety Transgenic mice are being developed for use in testing the safety of vaccines before they are used on humans. Transgenic mice are being used to test the safety of the polio vaccine. If successful and found to be reliable, they could replace the use of monkeys to test the safety of batches of the vaccine. Number 5. Chemical Safety Testing This is known as toxicity or safety testing. The procedure is the same as that used for testing toxicity of drugs. Transgenic animals are made that carry genes which make them more sensitive to toxic substances than non-transgenic animals. They are then exposed to the toxic substances and the effect studied. Toxicity testing in such animals will allow us to obtain results in less time. 10.4 Ethical Issues the manipulation of living organisms by the human race cannot go on any further without regulation. Some ethical standards are required to evaluate the morality of all human activities that might help or harm living organisms. Going beyond the morality of such issues, the biological significance of such things is also important. Genetic modification of organisms can have unpredictable results when such organisms are introduced into the ecosystem. Therefore, the Indian government has set up organizations such as GEAC, Genetic Engineering Approval Committee, which will make decisions regarding the validity of GM research and the safety of introducing GM organisms for public services. The modification or usage of living organisms for public services as food and medicine sources, for example, has also created problems with patents granted for the same. There is growing public anger 
that certain companies are being granted patents for products and technologies that make use of the genetic materials, plants and other biological resources that have long been identified, developed and used by farmers and indigenous people of a specific region or country. Rice is an important food grain, the presence of which goes back thousands of years in Asia's agricultural history. There are an estimated 2 lakh varieties of rice in India alone. The diversity of rice in India is one of the richest in the world. Basmati rice is distinct for its unique aroma and flavor and 27 documented varieties of basmati are grown in India. There is reference to Basmati in ancient texts, folklore and poetry as it has been grown for centuries. In 1997, an American company got patent rights on Basmati rice through the US Patent and Trademark Office. This allowed the company to sell a new variety of Basmati in the US and abroad. This new variety of basmati had actually been derived from Indian farmers' varieties. Indian basmati was crossed with semi-dwarf varieties and claimed as an invention or a novelty. The patent extends to functional equivalence, implying that other people selling basmati rice could be restricted by the patent. Several attempts have also been made to patent uses, products and processes based on Indian traditional herbal medicines, example turmeric, neem. If we are not vigilant and we do not immediately counter these patent applications, other countries or individuals may encash on our rich legacy and we may not be able to do anything about it. Biopiracy is the term used to refer to the use of bioresources by multinational companies and other organizations without proper authorization from the countries and people concerned without compensatory payment. Most of the industrialized nations are rich financially but poor in biodiversity and traditional knowledge. In contrast, the developing and the underdeveloped world is rich in biodiversity and traditional knowledge related to bioresources. Traditional knowledge related to bioresources can be exploited to develop modern applications and can also be used to save time, effort and expenditure during their commercialization. There has been growing realization of the injustice inadequate compensation and benefit sharing between developed and developing countries. Therefore, some nations are developing laws to prevent such unauthorized exploitation of their bioresources and traditional knowledge. The Indian Parliament has recently cleared the second amendment of the Indian Patent Bill that takes such issues into consideration, including patent terms, emergency provisions, and research and development initiative. Summary Biotechnology has given to humans several useful products by using microbes, plant, animals, and their metabolic machinery. Techniques of tissue culture and somatic hybridization offer vast potential for manipulation of plants in vitro to produce new varieties. Recombinant DNA technology has made it possible to engineer microbes, plants and animals such that they have novel capabilities. Genetically modified organisms have been created by using methods other than natural methods to transfer one or more genes from one organism to another, generally using techniques such as recombinant DNA technology. GM plants have been useful in increasing crop yields, reduce post-harvest losses and make crops more tolerant of stresses. There are several GM crop plants with improved nutritional value of foods and reduced the reliance on chemical pesticides, pest-resistant crops. Recombinant DNA technological processes have made immense impact in the area of healthcare by enabling mass production of safe and more effective therapeutics. 
since the recombinant therapeutics are identical to human proteins they do not induce unwanted immunological responses and are free from risk of infection as was observed in case of similar products isolated from non human sources human insulin is made in bacteria yet its structure is absolutely identical to that of the natural molecule transgenic animals are also used to understand how genes contribute to the development of a disease by serving as models for human diseases such as cancer cystic fibrosis rheumatoid arthritis and alzheimers gene therapy is the insertion of genes into an individual's cells and tissues to treat diseases especially hereditary diseases it does so by replacing a defective mutant allele with a functional one or gene targeting which involves gene amplification viruses that attack their host and introduce their genetic material into the host cell as part of their replication cycle are used as a vector to transfer healthy genes or more recently portion of genes the current interest in the manipulation of microbes plants and animals has raised serious ethical questions